Okay, now for question number four from M1, June 2018, the GCE paper, which has a code 6677. Um, a ball of mass 0 0.2 kilograms is projected vertically downwards with a speed u meters per second from a point A, which is 2.5 meters above horizontal ground. Okay, let's just take this bit a little bit. Here we have the horizontal ground and here we have the point A, let's say it's up here somewhere. So let's say this is the level of A. The ball is of mass 2.5 kg and it's projected vertically downwards with a speed of u, which we don't know. And its distance from the ground, its distance from the ground is the distance of A from the ground is 2.5 meters. Okay, that's 2.5 meters. Okay, then it says uh, the ball hits the ground. Immediately after hitting the ground, the ball rebounds vertically with a speed of 10 meters per second. Okay, so the ball hits the ground. So they say this is a ball hitting the ground. Okay, before it hits the ground, it's going at a certain speed which we don't know. Second. Before it hits the ground, it's going at a certain speed, which we don't know. Oops, I got that wrong, didn't I? Okay, that's the ball just before it hits the ground. Before it hits the ground, we don't know the speed with which it hits the ground, but we do know the speed with which it leaves the ground. Okay, so it hits the ground with the speed we don't know. I'm going to call that x because, of course, it's not going to be the same as this u. But it leaves the ground with the speed, as I said, 10 meters per second. That's 10 meters per second, the speed with which it leaves the ground. Okay, so that's hitting the ground and that's leaving the ground. And that's being thrown vertically downwards. Okay, the ball receives an impulse of magnitude 7 newton seconds in its impact with the ground. So there's going to be an impulse which, hit, which the, the ball receives from the floor, from the ground, which the impulse, of course, has to act in this direction. Okay, the impulse, its magnitude is 7 newton seconds. Okay, because it's, of course, the ball has changed direction. So for it to have changed direction, the impulse has to be acting in a direction opposite to its original direction. Okay, so the impulse of the ball, of the wall on the ball, that the ball receives from the wall is seven newton seconds and it's upwards okay now by modeling the ball as a particle and ignoring air resistance find first the value of u okay so to find the value of u what i need to do first is find the value of this x which is the speed with which it hits the ground okay if i can find the speed with which it hits the ground and I, i'll be able to work out what u is because i know the distance i know that the, the you know the Acceleration is due to gravity, and I'll be able to work that out. Okay, uh, so the first thing I need to do is find what this x is, and I can use the fact that I have the, the magnitude of the impulse of um, the wall or the ground on the ball. Okay, so I know that the impulse exerted on something can be found by choosing one of the objects and finding it, the change in its momentum. Of course, there's only one object here that we're going to be dealing with, which is the, the, the ball. Now, the ball has, of course, changed momentum. Okay, so the change of momentum is going to be the impulse. Okay, so the impulse we know is acting upwards. Now, as the ball was projected downwards, I'm going to take the downward, the downward direction as positive because the ball was first projected downwards. That's what I always like to do. It doesn't have to work like that. You can take up as positive always if you wish to, and it's perfectly fine, and it works. And probably the mark schemes and different other, you know, um, work solutions, you'll find it like that. I just prefer whichever way um, the, the thing was initially projected, I take that as positive. That's how I like to work. All right, so now we're taking down as positive. I'm taking down as positive. That means the impulse is going to be negative. It's been negative seven because the impulse I know it has to act upwards because it's what caused the ball to change the direction from down to up. And the mass, of course, doesn't have a sign, it's just a scalar. So 0 0.2 is a mass. Okay, oh no, what did I write there? See, there's a mistake there. 
be careful. The mass is 0 0.2 kilograms. Okay, 0 0.2 kilograms. Now, the speed with which it hits the ground is going to be, sorry, the speed uh, uh, this, in, ter in this situation about the impulse, the V is this final speed, which is the speed with which it leaves the ground, which is going to be upwards. So it's going to be minus 10 because I've taken down as positive. And then I've got minus U. The U here in, in this particular part of the question is this X, which is the speed with which it hits the ground, which of course is going to be a positive value because it's going down and our calculations should show that. Okay, so we're going to have minus 7 equals... Uh, 0, 0 0.2 times 10 is 2, so that's going to be minus 2 because there's a minus 10 there, and minus 0.2x. So solving this equation, you have 0.2x equals minus 2 plus 7, which is 5. So x is equal to 5 divided by 0 0.2, uh, which is 5 times 5, which is 25. So 25 meters per second is the speed with which it hits the ground. Okay, now, I know that's 25 meters per second now. So now I can use the SUVAC equations to find what the speed with which it was projected. This U here. So I know that we've got constant acceleration, which is acceleration due to gravity. And I'm taking down as positive. So this is going down. So that's positive. The displacement is positive. U is the initial speed, which is what I'm trying to find, capital U. V is the speed with which it hits the ground, which is 25, and it's positive because it's, it's traveling downwards just before it hits the ground. A is down as well because it's gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And I think T is not really needed here. Okay, so we can see we need an equation which has S and U and V and A. So that looks like it's going to be V squared equals u squared plus 2as, if we think about our SUVAC equations. Okay, so now v is 25, so that's 25 squared, okay, which is 625. u squared, well, we have to find what u is, so that's capital U squared, plus 2 times 9.8 times s, which is 2.5. Positive 2.5. Okay, so you have 625 is equal to u squared plus, that's going to be 5 times 9.8, which is 50, 49. Okay, so u squared is equal to 625 minus 49. Okay, so 625 minus 49. 576. So u squared is 576. So that means u is equal to the square root of 576, which is square root of answer 24. So u is 24 meters per second. Okay, so there we have the answer to part A. Okay. Now, for part B. After hitting the ground, the ball moves vertically upwards and passes through a point B, which is one meter above the ground. Find the time between the instant when the ball hits the ground and the instant when the ball first passes through B. Okay, so now. So here's the ground. So the ball has hit the ground. Now it's going to go upwards. So it's going upwards. Its initial speed going upwards is our 10 meters per second. This is now after it's hit the ground, it's going upwards. It's going to reach a point which is one meter above the ground. Okay, so it's going to reach a point which is one meter above the ground. So it's actually going to go pull past that point. Okay, it's going to go past that point because it says, it doesn't say that's the highest it reaches. It passes through a point B. So this is a point B, which is one meter above the ground. So it's going to go up above. It's going to, it's going to travel up 
and it's going to go up and then it's going to go down again. Okay, so it says find the time between the instant when the ball hits the ground and the instant when the ball first passes through B. Okay, so it's going to go up, it's going to pass through B, then it's going to come down again. Okay, so we need to find the time between it was uh, it bounced up until it reaches this point B. Okay, so if we think about this, we've got Suvat again. Now this time I'm going to take up as positive because after it hits the ground it's going to be going upwards. So if distance or the displacement from the initial position is 1 meters. The initial speed upwards is 10 meters per second, positive. The final speed we don't know. I don't think we need to know it. And A is this gravity, which is going to be G acting downwards, so minus 9.8. And T is what we have to actually find. This is what we have to find. Okay, so this is what we're trying to find. We know S, we know U, we know A, and we have to find T. So we've got to think of an equation which involves S, U, A, and T. And it's S equals UT plus a half a t squared. All right, so s is 1, u is 10, t we have to find. I'm going to have plus a half times minus 9.8 because a is acting downwards and we're taking up as positive in this part of the question and you got t squared. All right, so let's solve this equation. We have 1 equals 10t minus a half times 9.8 is 4.9 minus a half times 4.9 t squared so we have a quadratic equation 4.9 t squared minus 10 t plus 1 equals 0 in m1 it doesn't really it doesn't really matter okay if you don't show your steps for finding um solving a quadratic equation but just to be on the safe side we could use a quadratic formula here got minus b which is going to be 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 100 minus 4 times 1 times 4.9 all over 2 times 4.9 okay so that will give us two answers okay that will give us two answers so if you yeah so we're going to have 10 plus the square root of 100 minus 4 times 4.9 divided by 2 times 4.9 and that gives us 1.935 1.935 and it gives us if I change it to a minus now, zero point zero zero point one zero five zero point one zero five. In fact, let me just put it to one more decimal place there, okay, just so we can explain something to you. Nine nine three five four. Okay. Okay. So now we want to find the time when it first uh, hits. When find the time between the instant when the ball first hits the ground and the instant when the ball first passes through B. Okay. So that means we want to find when it first passes through B. So it's going to first pass through B at the smaller time. Because it's going to hit the ground, it's going to go up, going to go past B, and then it's going to come down again. All right. So on the way up, okay, we want to find the time that it passes through B on the way up. So on the way up, okay, it's going to be, of course, the smaller time. So the time we're looking for is equal to one zero point. Sorry, zero point one. 0 0.5 or if you want to write it you can it's up to you you can write it as 0 0.11 for um, m1 you can round if you have g if you have used g in your calculations 
then you, you have the option of rounding to two significant figures or three significant figures because G we take as 9.8, which is two significant figures. So we're allowed to round to two significant figures or three significant figures. If you have not used G, however, in your calculations, okay, in some type of questions where you don't need to use G, then you should round to three SF. So I guess the, the safest option is to round to three significant figures. That way you, um, you know, on the safe side. So that's what I would suggest. Anyway, that's part B. And part C says, sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of the ball from when it was projected from A to when it first passes through B. So we want a velocity time graph. So we're going to have sometimes we're going to have some velocities which were positive and some which were negative as it was um, changed. It changed direction, didn't it? So we have to have a negative and a positive part to the velocity. Uh, axis. So now, it was first projected at a speed of, what was it, 25? Yeah, 25 meters per second. When it first was thrown down, it was projected at a speed of 25 meters per second. So if I just make a little sketch here. So it's first thrown down at 25 meters per second. And we took down as positive, so um, of course its speed increases, okay, until it reaches um, No, sorry. It was first thrown down at a speed of 24 meters per second. 25 was the speed with which it hit the ground. So, it first it started out at 25 meters, 24 meters per second. Sorry, that's what our initial finding of u was, wasn't it? The, the u was here. u was 24 meters per second. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. And when it hit the ground, it had reached a speed of 25. That's where it was 25. So, it started off. Let me just put these things here started off at 24 meters per second it was going down and hit the ground at 25 meters per second and it was still going down at that point and then at that same point it changed direction and it ended up at 10 meters per second okay and then um to when it first passes through b you do not need to make any okay we don't need to find the speed at which it passed b basically i mean okay so basically it's going it's going from 24 and it reaches 25 Okay, and then we have to put this dotted line to show that they're connected somehow. It then changes its direction. So now its velocity is negative. And that's how we show this. And it's now minus 10 meters per second. Okay, and this is in seconds. So now it's minus 10 and its acceleration here is, is g. Okay. So its acceleration here is also g. Okay, that's the acceleration due to gravity. It's still accelerating at g. Okay, it's constant acceleration, which is g. Let me move this up a bit so that looks... Okay. And so it's going to be from here that it, it's going to... Let's put minus 10 over there, that's right. Okay, so it's going to, at this point, after this number of seconds, okay, which we don't know, when it hit the ground, okay, it changed direction. That's when it hit the ground. So it's, it's going, it's being thrown from above, it reaches 25 meters per second, it hits the ground, and then it rebounds. So it's moving, here it's moving in one direction, which was down, which we took as positive, and then it hits the ground, then it moves in the opposite direction, so that's why the velocity is negative. Okay, but it has the same acceleration, which is acceleration due to gravity. Okay, and then it reaches um, the point where it gets to uh, first passes, it says first passes through, um, what does it say? First passes through B, yes, it will be at this, this will, this will represent it. If it said until it passes through B a second time, then you'd have to continue this until the velocity became zero and then it started falling down again and then it would be passing through b here somewhere over there for example but it says first passes through b so it's still moving upwards it's still moving in the upwards direction so we've taken upwards as positive as sorry upwards as negative so therefore it still has a negative velocity at the point where it first passes through b and it didn't tell us to write down anything else Okay, we just know that this is uh, this is 
this is 0 0.11, 0 0.11 seconds from the point where it hits the ground. Okay, we don't know the time from the beginning. And we weren't told anything about that. That's why it says you need not make any further calculations. So all you need to have is this information here, I guess. Okay, what I do know is this time is 0 0.11 seconds. This time there. I don't know what that is. We weren't told anything about that. So there we have the answer to part C of this question. From the motion when it was projected from A, 21st passes through B. I think there's a, um, there's a bit of ambiguity in this question. Okay. Yeah, in part C, because it says here, when it was projected from A to when it first passes through B. Uh, what they actually, um, what could be understood from this was when it was first projected from A, it was moving downwards and it passed through B before it hit the ground. And I think some students understood this question in that way, in which case your answer would be something just like, um, you know, it's going to be less than this. Okay, without any calculations, it'll just be something that looks like this. Okay, that's when it first passes through B. Okay, but I don't think that's what they intended by the question, but the wording of the question could be understood like that. Okay, it should say, really, sketch a velocity time graph from the motion of the ball from when it was projected um, to after it bounced and then passes through B the first time. That's how they should have worded the question if they wanted it to be, um, you know, this what they intended. Because if you look at the mark scheme, they've told you this as your answer and they've given this as an alternative. Okay, and that means basically if somebody understood that it meant, you know, before it hit the ground, that it was thrown, when it was thrown first from A and it passed through B the first time, just that little bit there. What they actually mean is when it's thrown from A, hit the ground and then went through B again. That's what they actually intend in this question if you look at the mark scheme. But that's why they got an alternative because maybe a lot of students actually just did this, misunderstood, well, not really misunderstanding, the question is not actually worded. Um, in in a proper way if they, if they intend that so that's why they gave those marks just for drawing that little bit there um, if you understood the question in that way okay so sometimes the, the examiners do um, you know leave questions a bit vague but then if they see a lot of students have understood it in a way other than intended then they do give you uh, the marks for it if it was there for for their wording okay so there's the answer to that question